What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Investing Bros. We've got a lot to talk about in this video. We're gonna be talking about Bitcoin once again. Now yesterday we made a video. We did, gave a long-term price prediction, a short-term price prediction. We yesterday hit that short-term price prediction up at 44.2. We actually went a little bit above it, up into the 44, uh, $400 level, maybe 44.5, depending on what exchange you were on. Uh, I think even Coinbase went to 45,000 on the dot. However, while we have had some good news and the price is continuing to hover right there on $44,000 at the making of this video, there is some, some, some concerning news coming out last night. And before we get into it, I want to make sure I, I lay the foundation for this well. This is not concrete. There's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of what's. There's a lot of who knows what's going to happen with this. But if you didn't already have a reason to disdain Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, this one's going to do it. This was going to put you over the top. If you were one of those people, I know there's, a, there's the hashtag fire Gary been going on for months now. If you were signed kind of on the outside of that being like, ah, eh, you know, like, I don't like Gary, but yeah, you know, it's whatever. Like I'm a Bitcoin person. I don't, you know, if, if you have been that type of a person, this one's going to do it for you. Gary needs to lose his job. Gary needs to be relieved of his duties. He needs to go spend more time on the beach with his twin brother on their birthdays and every other day of the year. Because this man is not the right man for the job. He's not only going to ruin crypto and altcoins. If he continues to have his way, he will have control to destroy crypto, Bitcoin, and everything in the United States that has to do with uh, blockchain technology. He's going to ruin it. He's going to send it overseas. It's going to be a massive, massive mistake. And you might be wondering, Tim, what are you talking about? Let's go ahead and share my screen. This is circulating this morning. Some of you may have already seen it. Some of you may have not, but there was an article put out by several different people, but I'm going to read the one here by Jake Simmons. Uh, SEC demands spot Bitcoin ETF kill switch. What experts have uncovered? Let's kind of dive into the article and see what is going on. I've highlighted a couple of the key points I think are really important here. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is currently actively working with applicants of spot Bitcoin ETF traded funds, guiding them through what appears to be the final stage stages of amendments before potential approval. Hey, good job. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right there, guys. They're still moving towards approval. This this bad news is not saying that we're not gonna get Bitcoin ETFs. We still might get a delay. Even John Deaton this morning is speculating there might be a, a, a rug pull on January 10th where they have a BS excuse to continue to push that down the road. Um, so there is, the, there is still a chance we don't get ETFs till closer to March. But I want to make sure you understand this article is not saying that they're not going to approve Bitcoin ETFs. It's worse. I, I would almost rather them just deny the ETFs than what this article is talking about. Let's go back to it. So they're working on these last second steps, but they you know, does the SC demand a Bitcoin ETF kill switch? What, what is an ETF kill switch? What would that mean? This is according to a post. We're going to look at his tweet later by Joe Carlosar. I, I don't know how that's pronounced, but significant change in the language of BlackRock's S1 filing. This amendment by BlackRock implies severe consequences if Bitcoin is ever classified as a security within the United States. I'm going to read this again. This amendment by BlackRock implies severe consequences if Bitcoin is ever classified as a security within the United States. It suggests that such a classification would make it challenging to trade, clear, or custody Bitcoin with potentially drastic impact on its market value and liquidity. Now, I'm, I'm, before I go back and kind of just break this down, I agree with him right here. This seems silly, but apparently the SEC wants that language in there. We have been talking about Cardano being a security, Matic being a security, Solana being a security, all these altcoins that the, the SEC has not, they, they've put in different filings as security, but they haven't actually gone directly after them. They, of course, lost their lawsuit to XRP. They won aspects of it with Ripple, but they lost XRP. XRP was deemed by a judge, not a security, but we never really heard them talk about Bitcoin. In fact, we thought we heard remarks from Gary Gensler and his goons saying that Bitcoin was not a security. However, now, as we're getting to the late stages of the ETFs, they keep playing with all the issuers of these ETFs, and they're messing with the language in the latest edition. The latest edition is keeping a clause that potentially would imply Bitcoin could someday 
be treated like a security. Let's go take a look at that tweet. Again, this was a tweet by Joe. Again, Carl Lassar. If you guys know how that's pronounced, you know, let me know down below. You can spell it out in the comments. Uh, by the way, go ahead and hit that like button if you are enjoying the video and this is helpful to you. Um, but yeah, his tweet was interesting update to BlackRock regarding the consensual, uh, the concern that SEC could take an approach that the Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is a potential security. Seems silly, but apparently the SEC wants the language in there. I'm not going to read through all of this. Uh, but this is the filing. This is the part of the filing that the that BlackRock put into their file. This is part of the filing that BlackRock put in here recently. And they reference XRP, which again, I'm going to remind you, the XRP was listed or accused of being a security by the SEC. And after a long two and some change years of battling in court, XRP won. So even that's kind of stupid. But ultimately, ultimately, the kill switch we're talking about here. The SEC is probably going to approve these ETFs. They're going to allow people to trade Bitcoin on these ETFs using BlackRock, Fidelity, yada, yada, yada. But they will keep complete control. And they're getting all of the issuers to put into their filings that this is a concern and they're aware that potentially if Bitcoin is classified as a security, that it could be killed, that they, they could, there's a, there's a whole plan in that document. You guys can go read it in his tweet, but pretty much there's a plan of what it would look like if these ETFs are shut down and how the uh, users or buyers would get their money back. Ultimately, it would have to be with these companies selling all of their Bitcoin and then paying people in cash. It's absolutely stupid. This is Gary Gensler's one more good twist to continue to control not only crypto, but Bitcoin as well. You thought he was gonna be a supporter. You thought maybe Bitcoin was gonna be safe. And then, like we have said before, the only person who knows what's going on in the brain, the only person that knows what's happening in the neurons between the two ears of Gary Gensler is Gary Gensler. And he is capable of anything. So, I'll remind you, this isn't necessarily hardened anything just yet. Like this isn't doomsday for crypto. This isn't, man, Bitcoin is definitely over. But it's one more layer of concern that has to get you thinking, what the heck? We need to get rid of this man. He needs to be gone. He's dangerous to Bitcoin, to crypto, and ultimately he's dangerous to the United States of America moving forward. The consequences of killing crypto in the United States, I can't even begin to tell you how horrible that would be for our already struggling economy. Uh, yeah, it's doing better than a lot of the other economies around the world, but it's struggling. You know that, I know that, and Gary Gensler, what he is doing in the name of protecting us is going to ruin us. Make sure that you guys continue doing everything you can to uh, make your voices heard that he needs to lose his job. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin price. Like we said yesterday, we did end up hitting that uh, price prediction we called out. This is the Coinbase exchange. You will see this wick right here actually went all the way to 45,000. As a whole, um, not every exchange did that. Like for example, this is the index on TradingView. It kind of takes into account the average of, of all of them. We only reached a, a measly fourth 44,490 on as a whole. So Coinbase was a little bit extra here with that wick going up. Uh, but my prediction yesterday, I told you guys that conservative, let's go to the uh, yeah, conservative price prediction here with the bull pennant ended up hitting, uh, I'm not gonna say perfectly because that wick definitely went above, but we would have gone above at 44.4, that's higher. I, I told you guys 44.252. So my apologies, everybody. I was about $200 short of where most of the exchanges got to. I do apologize to you, but I feel like we got pretty close. I feel like that was a good call. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it was a good call. Uh, what we're looking at now, guys, remember, if we go back out to the hourly chart, there is a more aggressive version of this. I gave the conservative one, but there is an aggressive one that potentially we could see the price of Bitcoin uh, go even higher here, pushing maybe a little bit closer towards 46,500. Uh, so keep your eyes on that. But right now, as we kind of zoom back in here, looking at the 10 minute chart, very low time frame. Um, but we are seeing a little bit of a support level kind of develop here. Yes, we had a wick drop below, but we have multiple touches now on this rising level of support. That's a good sign. Uh, we technically have a slightly, I'm not going to use the wick here. I'm going to go ahead and go with candle bodies for this initial one. You have a little bit of a descending level of resistance, which means once again, this is another bull pennant. Let's go ahead and make this one blue. I don't know why I have this one this way. Let's go make this one white. Uh, this, of course, again, would be another bull pennant kind of forming right here. Uh, if we were to take the flagpole, let's see what the price prediction of this one would be. Uh, let's see if it gets anywhere close to the call that we just had here a little bit ago. Nah, it's going to be, yeah, actually, shoot, it's a little bit over it, but it's 
kind of sitting there very close. This one gets us to 46,800. The other one was 46,500. So $300 difference. But we are seeing a little bit of a, a, a saying, saying a little bit of confluence here saying that we could be seeing Bitcoin heading up just a little bit higher. Let's take a look at our oscillators. You will see, yes, here more recently, we did have an overwrought flash, but we corrected. Then we got a bullish divergence here on the 10 minute chart. As you start to move up into higher time frames and, and hourly still low, but you are seeing the oscillator approaching back down towards that mid level as we're hitting support that's really bullish you're starting to see green histograms come in here on the hourly chart uh, i'm going to assume the four hours remaining overextended but as we've said before yeah peak seeker overextended but as we've said before here you can live when the momentum is bullish when the price action is bullish you can live in the overextended world for a while uh, and continue to move to the upside. Uh, we are flashing again, overbought once again on the daily chart, but I told you guys, even if we see a small correction, I'm looking for bearish divergence. I, I'm looking for whether we top out right here, we get to 46 and then move back down to the downside with the oscillators. My next bearish divergence is starting with this, Whenever we end this peak, because we're still, you know, we still have a white candle here, which is good, and blue candle today, but let's see how it closes. As long as this momentum continues, I'm waiting then for a regrouping and then a higher high on the price action with a lower high on oscillators. That to me will be the sign that it's time to then reverse. What are we looking at right there? I think we are still kind of taking eyeballs somewhere between 46 to 50,000. Would not be surprised if we hit just right there in the middle. This is a level people have been talking about. 48,000 has been very, very, uh, a really hot spot that people have talked about a lot, mostly because that was the high we had back on March 28th, back in 2022, 48,200. So absolutely, you want to be keeping your eyes on that level as well. Of course, 50,000 is where we're getting to with the Fibonacci levels, uh, but you, you do want to keep your eyes on past levels of resistance. Let's take a look here. Fixed range volume profile, just kind of even see what it's saying in this same range. You're going to see not a lot of volume as we're getting up here. We're wrestling right now, again, right here, 44.2. It could get interesting at 45.3. You guys are going to see that little volume gap right there on the left. Then you have a nice peak right there, right around some of our predictions. Well, that's higher, 47.2. So uh, that would be weird if it stopped at 46.5, honestly. Then you have right here, 48.3, 48.2 area. Uh, yeah, 48.2 area is where we're going to see another gap. And then, you know, if we start to make it up here to 50, it's, begun, it's going to become anyone's game. You could see because of the low volume there, you could see a run up here to the higher end, 58,000. I would be very surprised if we ran up to 58,000, but it is possible. It's absolutely possible. What we're keeping our eyes on right now, though, can we regain momentum? Let's keep an eye on what happens around 45.3, because again, uh, that is the next big gap. And uh, historically, when you look at a lot of our bounces, they've happened in these gaps. Uh, right here in the fixed range volume profile. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're looking for your next spot to be taking profit. Be prepared, guys. Altcoins could make a run today. Cardano's already looking kind of nice this morning, to up 2.8%. Solana up 3.7%. Uh, the big one last night, and it's cooled off a little bit, but AVAX made a nice little rally last night, continuing to go up uh, and, and press some new levels here. Not necessarily for, yeah, I guess it is newer in the year because August 22 was the last big high. Look for potentially AVAX to make a move back up to that high, back at $30, um, but it could go even higher. You know, we're just now wrestling with that point. 382 level on AVAX. Could we get up to 0.5 around 36? I'll have to do some more technical analysis on technical analysis on that later on in the show. I'll keep you posted throughout the day, though, if you're on our Discord. Another big one, Render. This is one that I do think still has the potential to make it up here to resistance somewhere around $5.20-ish. So look today. I'm, I think Bitcoin could make a push too, but yesterday Bitcoin kind of led the way, leading the Bitcoin dominance back up to 55%. Not going to be surprised if today's bullishness has a lot more to do with some of the altcoins we'll have to reflect on this again tomorrow but guys that's all i have for you in this video continue to stay vigilant continue to look at what's happening in the news and on the charts let anyone you know if you can uh, contact a local congressman senator name anyone you can get a hold of continue to make your voice heard that gary gensler needs to go he's bad for crypto and he's bad for america guys with that said smash that like button on the way out Hit the subscribe button as well if this is your first time watching the channel and leave me some comments down below on what you what your thoughts are of this video and what are some other topics you want to see me talk about in the future. Guys, you have a fantastic day. See you in the next one.